Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp. I'm usher you, ushering you into this weekend. It is October 15th. There's a lot going on, um, except for city council. There's not much going on there. I'll talk a little bit about that, but for the most part, we're going to kick things off with a little bit of COVID news. Uh, city, keep, city of Missoula is having uh, their darkest time when it comes to COVID. City of Missoula broke another record with 175 new cases last week. This is uh, the latest update by, by Cindy Farr, the Missoula uh, City County Health Department and she'll probably most likely give an update today sometime on her uh, YouTube channel. And you can get the latest information by going on to 258info. Montana is one of the few states with low numbers of vaccinations. And like I said at the start of this, uh, we had a good summer. And now we're dealing with a loss of about 137 residents from, uh, from uh, officially uh, in Missoula alone and in rural areas are twice as likely, according to Sydney Farr, Incident Command of Missoula Health Department. Uh, MissoulaInfo.com, community testing partners for other means to get a COVID test. So if you're having any problems, uh, the uh, MissoulaInfo.com is another resource that you can use to not only uh, get a COVID test through those drive-in pop-in tests uh, off of Flynn Lane, but also be able to find other partners that can help you along the way. Uh, last night, uh, uh, MCAT, we uh, live streamed a candidates forum uh, hosted by Mont Perg, and this was a Q&A. The students at the University of Montana got involved with some politics, and they talked to a lot of the uh, city council war representatives. I'm not going to talk to you too much about it. I just wanted to know that uh, that if you're interested in learning about your ward candidates, there's six wards in the city of Missoula, so, yeah, so <laughs> just so you know, and it'll be on MCAT sometime next week on channel 190, but also you can follow us on our Facebook page at Missoula's Community Media Resource, and and um, you can find out more about that. Uh, we also have a new app and everything for MCAT. I just wanted to uh, plug that as well because MCAT just launched a new app. It's uh, all you got to go to. All you got to do is go to the App Store on Apple and look for uh, Missoula TV or MCAT TV, uh, and you'll be able to pop it in. And it's a pretty nice app. I really do like it. It's uh, very uh, user friendly. And it's very YouTube kind of thing, but it's very centralized to Missoula for Missoula. Uh, it's never too early to talk about Christmas, not because of the shopping season, but because of the lack of shipping and transportation. What I mean to say is that transporting goods and services have slowed down exponentially, with cargo freighters waiting to unload and empty containers having to cross the Pacific Ocean uh, just to get restocked up for more supplies. Uh, the pandemic has caught up with a lot of businesses who rely on a steady stream of shipments. You know, there was already some issues of shortages with toilet paper in the very beginning of the pandemic, and now with uh, just the overall lack of, of resources many e even uh, long uh, truck drivers who'd work 13 16 hours just to get the shipment from point A to point B have reevaluated a lot of their jobs and there's a huge um, empty void in those positions so uh, just uh, hey don't believe me <laughs> you will uh, orders from Amazon have slowed significantly most orders like I ordered something just a couple weeks ago uh, yeah like I said a couple weeks ago they haven't gotten here yet so uh, you basically went from going from three to four days to about two to three weeks tops and it's only gonna get worse especially during the uh, shopping holiday season so I'm giving you the uh, the uh, the details on the ground floor. So the band was also slow because people needed a pinch of pennies. Well, that's what they assumed because one of the big things that happened is that a lot of people started buying stuff. Like, you know, with the uh, 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 release of, the, you know, PlayStation 5, the Xbox One X series, you know, there, there, there's like a 500 names for the Xbox. But regardless of that, semiconductors. It's all about them semiconductors because they are part of Silicon Valley. The IP is centralized and only created in Silicon Valley to be shipped around and uh, th there's only a few other places that actually build the semiconductors, uh, Silicon Valley in California. And, you know, in California, a lot of jobs have slowed and stopped, and many places are not allowed to have in-person businesses as a result and have s uh, basically stayed that course uh, even to today. You know, may, you know, Montana may look like one of those uh, COVID nightmares for many of you, but California has treated the pandemic with a lack of foresight when it comes to the supplies. Some of the conductors are used in cars, and many car manufacturers cannot build new vehicle vehicles used uh, cars far and few in between. Thanks, Obama. And yeah, I, 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 what I mean is that Obama did a cash for junkers, taking many used cars off the market as a result. Whoops. Uh, this Christmas, think ahead, way ahead, and plan on getting your stuff before November begins. You will thank me later. Uh, also, gas prices are uh, not the administration's fault. It is caused by the lack of use during the pandemic, and supply only went down. Thanks, big oil. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot going on, but I'm not going to. Uh, but I'm going to end it here, and I'm going to show you uh, something a little more uh, uh, light. 
in the comedy, and then when I come back, I have an interview with Missoula Aging Services, so stay with me. Brooke, it's uh, coming up to winter time soon. Yep. Uh, do you do anything in the winter time? Do you do any outdoor winter activities? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, uh, I drink wine and watch Netflix. What, yeah. What's your current, what's your current uh, Netflix show? Ooh, to be, TBH, I've been watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, and that's on Hulu. So okay, that's fine. Um, who's, your, who's your favorite housewife, and what housewife do you think needs a swift kick in the face? Wow. Um, I think my favorite housewife is Kyle Richards, and yeah, swift kick in the face, uh, Lisa Vanderpump. Right, I know who both of those people are. Um, okay, we're gonna put a pin in this conversation and hear a quick word from our sponsors. All right, check this out, I practice this. This really went a lot smoother earlier when you weren't here. In the real housewives, I've been watching the real housewives want to kick Lisa Vanderpump in the face. We're back here with uh, Madison and Mary, and they're here to talk about Residence Rights Month. Uh, there's a lot going on, and what is the what is uh, the most important thing about uh, this month for you guys? Yeah, well, thank, thanks for having us, and we did um, want to come and speak a little bit about the Ombudsman Program, and October is Resident Rights Month, so we right. wanted to talk a little bit about the importance of that month. Um, we uh, both work at Missoula Aging Services, Madison and I, and... Um, the Ombudsman Program is one of many programs at Missoula Aging Services, and our mission is to support the independence, dignity, health of older adults and those who care for them. Nice. <laughs> could, uh, Madison, could you tell us a little bit more about the program? Yeah, of course. So, um, as Ombudsman, our main role is to advocate on behalf of the residents to ensure that they have quality care while in long-term care facilities. Mm -hmm. um, and we do that in a variety of ways, um, like investigating and helping to resolve resident complaints mm -hmm. and um, ensuring that they don't get discharged improperly from the facilities. Um, another role that we play is also educating staff and residents and family members on resident rights and the ombudsman program in general. Cool. And I think that the one thing that really stood out to me on the email that I got was just like being able to listen to the people who need help, people asking for help and find out ways how you can help them. And I think that's very important, especially when people are in either nursing care, assisted living homes, or just the next step after retirement where they're just in the non-assistant, but they have the uh, amenities close by just so their voices can be heard. And I think that's a a really awesome program, and I know that Missoula Agent Services really advocates for aging adults and they're those who care for them. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, um, so October is Resident Rights Month. It's a national celebration of Resident Rights Month. And the theme this year is reclaiming our rights, our home, our life. So, um, you know, during the past year and a half with with the COVID environment, um, some of those rights were somewhat diminished. Yeah. Um, and for the protection, and rightly so, for the protection of the residents yeah. so that they um, could be protected from COVID by not having visitors in the facilities and limiting some of their outings and things like that. Yeah. So, so this is a perfect time with Resident Rights Month to think about restoring those rights a little bit. And although we are still not 
out of the, the risk, right. we are trying to restore some of those rights and work towards um, really recognizing the importance and honoring those residents who live in long-term care. Um, so it's, it's a very important month um, just to celebrate and honor all the contributions of the residents and um, to really, you know, bring those rights back in as the cornerstone. Um, that's the cornerstone of the Ombudsman program, but also it's, um, so civil rights are much like human rights. Right. And, you know, oftentimes we don't think about that in terms of someone being in a facility. It sometimes can seem more institutionalized. Yeah. Especially during the last year, it's like you're not able to see your family, you know, family who just come, who would come and visit you, you know, then those folks are just like, you know, I want to see my grandparents, but I'm worried I might, you know, I might kill them because of the, the sickness that's going around and everything, and just everything was just so shut down, and like a lot of the senior residents were just so isolated. Yes, yes, and it's been, it's been um, kind of difficult for, yeah. for the residents and the staff, and um, everyone involved, the families, and so I think everyone is doing their best to protect the residents and provide them with the quality of care and quality of life that they need and that they deserve. Um, so, you know, during Resident Rights Month, we just like to highlight those resident rights still are important and, and it still is the resident's home. Um, so if people know someone in long-term care, they can certainly reach out and visit during this time if it's allowed, I mean, based on the circumstances, yeah. but certainly calling, writing cards, um, you know, try to see if, if they're not allowing indoor visits, if they have window visits available or some type of video chat um, where you can still yeah. make that connection. And anything can help. And mm -hmm. uh, you're also looking for volunteers and help. So Madison, do you want to talk a little bit more about people who can volunteer? Yeah, so our volunteer program, we're looking for people that can reach out and um, help with like socialization with people in long-term care. Um, yeah, and it's, a, and it's a great way just to touch base with folks because even because uh, I've interviewed people from Missouri Agent Service all the time mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, Meals on Wheels is another program and it's one of the few checks a lot of those folks get. I mean, they're a certain degree very independent and some of them don't have that kind of living indoor assistance that they would have, but also the nonprofit, which is Missoula Agent Services, does so many programs and this is just one of those programs that really helps residents as a whole, even if it is just checking in with them and seeing if they're okay. Yeah, that, that's exactly right, and we rely so much on our volunteers, so anyone who's interested and has a heart for working with people who are in long-term care, um, interested in educating people about resident rights, we would, we would love for them to give us a call and um, talk about that process and what that looks like. Yeah. And if you want more information, you can also go to their website at missoulaagentservices.org, uh -huh. and you can find out more information about this program and more. That's, that's correct, and um, also we do have our call center where you can call Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 at 728-7682, or like you said, check out the website. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me, guys. I really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you yeah, thank so much. You. Yep, and this month is Residence uh, Rights Month, so give some rights to some residents. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, guys. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about some movies that are coming out this week. It's time for Pre-Critic, where I pre-judge a movie based on absolutely nothing than my pre-disposition uh, and biases towards movies in general. Uh, this movie was the reason... Oh, this... This movie was the reason why Venom 2 came out earlier this year. This movie continues the bogus adventures of Michael Myers in Halloween Kills on his one-man killing spree because he's evil. Slasher films have followed this formula many times before, and this is one of the first evil in the form of an unstoppable shape, as he's called the shape. Anyways, watch a uh, town uh, with too many guns and no sense uh, uh, among them, among the lot of them, as they hunt and try to survive this guy who wants to go home for Halloween. Huh, it's kind of like, um, planes, trains, and automobiles, uh, trains, uh, planes, trains, and automobiles, but, uh, less off-putting. Uh, he'll make it, <laughs> he'll make it, it, and be, uh, uh, be shot up, only to be have an eye-opening tease at the end, he'll, he'll like, they'll just zoom in on his face, and he'll go like, Barrr! And then the things in the end. Okay, so you know, uh, you know, those zoom. Yeah, yeah, y that's exactly what's probably going to happen because they got to keep making money for these horror movies, and they're cheap to make. All right, up next we got Bergman Island. Uh, something about writer's block blends reality from fiction. 
I don't know. It's kind of like uh, going to a quiet island with a cozy, creative type needing to create a story with a wife who's bored enough to challenge the writer at every turn. Anyways, the trailer has uh, the director and the other actors explain this movie, even though it's uh, about a writer who meets the subjects of his mind and how their relationship influenced the end and continuation of this current one. Don't expect much because I sure won't. I'm pretty sure it's just going to be like one of those movies where it's like, oh, the characters you were writing the whole time are actually real and you just thought they were fake and you think you could manipulate them, blah, 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 all that stuff. There's always some kind of weird was like that. Up next, we got a time travel movie. Yes, uh, it's one of those like kind of third-rate time travel movies because with a lot of like science fiction, horror, or not not science fiction but fantasy, like the third movie uh, always follows the rules of they have to have some form of time travel. Harry Potter did it, A Men in Black did it, <laughs> Avengers did it. <laughs> time travel again. It's about a woman whose ex-husband is trying to erase her current relationship, so kind of like Back to the Future, but maintaining the time-esque domestic abuse. Uh, so I suppose she finds out and must reverse what her ex-husband ex -husband did, so she won't erase time, so it's kind of like needle in a time stack. Get it? It's wordplay. Clever. Whatever. This movie is, <laughs> is about to stop her current relationship. It is about to uh, basically hold on to her current relationship, even though her uh, the time is correct in itself, and she's starting to lose memories from her or he's r r forgetting about her, something like that, because frankly, the bad ex doesn't actually love her. He loves the idea of her. What a waste of time, travel technology. All right, so that's about your movies that are uh, popping in this weekend as well. Um, I'm, I'm sure most of you will probably want to see a Halloween movie during the October month, so go ahead. By all means, do it. I dare you. Um, so up next, we got a new dub and stuff for you guys. This is from the movie His Girl Friday from 1940. All right. Here you go. Mm-hmm. So, I was watching this nature documentary and stuff, and I was thinking to myself, was, why don't we just go back to if being If you all say another word about us going back into loincloth, hey, yo, I'm gonna go. smack you. Quit looking up that girl's skirt. I was only catching a peek. <laughs> you's not in kindergarten anymore. All right, the ante up is about five dollars. You guys can afford it? Yeah, yeah, I, I got your five dollars. Hey, Binky. Uh, what do you got on your cards? Anything good? <laughs> you don't ever get to see my cards. Not at the beginning. <laughs> Looks like you're playing hardball, aren't you, son? Hey, my father and I used to play hardball. Come on, show <laughs> us. <laughs> you're not going to see any of my cards anytime soon. Maybe after I win. You actually think you're going to win this? Tell us more about your daddy. I like making you squirm. I'm a sociopath, after all. Hey, I'm Ritzko. What's your name? Fine. Ignore me. I don't care. All right, let's get this game over with already. Wait, this isn't blackjack. Uh, excuse me. I got some words for y'all. Um, do, do you guys ever actually work around here? Oh, don't sass me, lady. I'm just trying to play cards. Hey, I was, oh, never mind. Should probably reject me anyways. You might be wondering why I'm here to talk about you in your face. I'm just here to say some words, and I hope you guys listen. I'm listening. I'm uh, listening to the heart of the cards. Well, that's a... Uh, you all have to listen to me, not just one of you. Come on, you. you're telling me what cards. Uh, what if no. there's a fire, and nobody is there to, like, tell you guys, and you don't listen, and then you all burn up in the fire? It's not fair. It's not really cool if you guys burn up in a fire, because fires aren't cool. They're really serious. They're hot. And I just hope. The name of the games I are just cards. Hope that one day you'll listen to somebody when they're trying to tell you something. We got a stenographer. We don't have to listen. Thanks for doing your job. So, you can't actively listen to me. You need somebody to write it down for you so you can review it later and then pick apart my argument. Yeah. Do I really talk that much? Will you just stop? As I was saying, uh, is this really going to be an ongoing thing with just that lady typewriting and typewriting and oh it's. I'm just losing my mind. Can one really lose their mind? The mind is a terrible thing to waste. Y you stole that from somewhere. I just know it. You gotta do something. My hands are getting tired. I need a break. Uh, what's that sound? What's going on out there? Oh. Well, that's what happens when you take on big oil. You get the gallows. Is, is this some kind of theme? Are you trying to say something? Is this, is this your attempt to sell electric cars? Because I ain't going to buy one. I swear, I can't even afford one. All right. 
Relax, okay? Oh, no, get off me! No, stop! All right, come on, dear. Let's go I to lunch. I hope you're paying. I guess I could pay. No, and I don't come want on. just ketchup. I want mustard, too, and maybe fry sauce. Okay, okay. Or Chester sauce, too. That'd be great. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. This is impossible. Don't worry about it. I've got your bag. <laughs> I just don't know what to do anymore. Bouncy ball, don't fail me now. <laughs> oh. Hey guys, oh, there we are. Hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> All right, no city council from Monday because of the uh, Indigenous Peoples Day, but we have some admin and finance looking to buy emergency radio equipment. The city wishes to finance the purchase of public safety and communication equipment, utilizing the favorable terms of Motorola lease agreement in pursuit of IRS regulation and municipality must adopt a statement of official intent and to reimburse an original expenditure with tax-exempt debt. So the whole idea is they hope to pay this out of the road district and other grants they hope to get through this. But most of this is supposed to be like emergency, you know, uh, wavelengths and be like, hey, there's an emergency happening and we want to have the telecommunication uh, infrastructure to be able to give people warning if need be. And so some of that uh, is going to be part of that. And that's basically what they talked about. It was a 20-minute meeting, really short. There's really not much going on this week, so that's kind of how I wanted to wrap things up for your city council meeting. But I do have a another interview for you guys I want to show you guys, and this is with James Wassum, who is the, I guess, the technical supervisor for all the live streams from Dunrovin Ranch. Yes, if you are interested in learning about uh, some of the Osprey that live in some of the rural area rather than some of the Osprey that live in the uh, downtown Missoula area, you guys can learn more about days at dunrovenranch.com where you can find all these bird uh, videos and more. Um, I'm going to have James Wassum explain it a little bit more. Take it away, me. Hey, James. Welcome to my Howdy. show. And uh, I've been trying to get you on for a little while now. And you uh, hail all the way from Dunrovin Ranch, which you are the uh, uh, basically the main tech guy who does the streams through Dunrovin Ranch. Yep, so the head geek. The head geek. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about uh, you know those live from Dunrovin Ranch uh, streams. Yeah, so we've been live streaming now since I think 2012. Um, it started when the University of Montana put up a camera for an osprey nest. Uh, so we have a nest there at Dunrovin and we've had a, a mating pair there for years and years and the University of Montana wanted to do some research to compare the osprey and fish coming out of the Bitterroot River versus the Clark Fork River. Kind of like a, a city osprey versus a rural osprey. Kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go with that, yeah, for sure. So, and and we're only like ten miles south of Missoula, right? So, um, but it but it's in a totally different valley and drainage and everything. So, it's kind of cool to get started that way. But that grew from one camera on a nest to now we have four cameras live streaming 24-7. Cool. And uh, people can look that up on uh, uh, online? Yeah, um, days at dunrovin.com is the website. And uh, we've got all four cameras there. And you can um, you can watch all four for free, or you can be a member and chat and kind of get to oh, know us and chat right. with all the other members that are watching and, and see a calendar of all our upcoming live streams. Because we do, uh, the nature cams are part of the live streams, but we also do special broadcasts. So we have horse training, horseback riding, we do dog training, we've got uh, presentations on the ospreys and all kinds of different things. Yeah, that's becoming that. more and more uh, useful, a lot of like not necessarily uh, ranches, farms, and just a lot of people, even like people who sell like big cattle, and they yeah. uh, like just to be able to show off, you know, the cattle, their, their meat stock and their beef and all that stuff, just yeah. to kind of show people, you know, some of, you know, how they move and how that stuff, because that's becoming more and more uh, like, such a big deal, especially when you know, like they go to auction, they do some training and stuff like that. But yours, uh, Dunrobe, it seems like there's a lot uh, more geared towards education type stuff and yeah. other kind of uh, um, uh, goodwill causes and stuff. Because I remember one of the big things that Dunrobe did was the painted horses. That's right. Yeah, you came down and helped us uh, do some features for that. And we've been doing that for about three or four years now. And it's a fundraiser for some of the different charities we've worked with over the years. And so what we do is we have artists come, and, and this last year we had six artists paint six horses, and they paint on them with uh, water-soluble you know, gouache paints. Right. It's all bio-friendly and everything. But um, we do a contest, and then we have people online that are watching the live stream 
vote. And so it costs $5 a vote or something for charity. And so all that money ends up going to support these charitable causes. Yeah. And it's a fun art contest, and it's very novel seeing these painted horses run around. And yeah. It's pretty neat. And it's also on the website. You know, people yeah. can check out the last couple of years. You know, yeah. you have professional photography come down and take yeah. some photos. Just a lot of... Just a lot of great programs there yeah. as well. And uh, you also, um, Dunrobin, besides being Dunrobin, what are some of the systems that you use in place to keep the live stream going? Yeah, we actually have a lot of moving parts there. Um, so, you know, when you think of just going out and shooting video on your phone or something, you can definitely live stream that way. Right. But for us, we've got cameras on a nest, we've got camera over the river, we've got a camera looking at the ranch and a bird feeding station. These cameras are 24-7. So they've got to be out in the elements all day, 365 days a year. So they've got to work in the heat of the day when it's 100 degrees out or when it's, you know, 30 below. Below 20 and like <laughs> right. really freezing outside. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so we use uh, what's called uh, motorized PTZ cameras, pan, tilt, zoom. And they look kind of like a dome. Uh, they're big, white dome. And then uh, we can remote control them yep. by our computer system. And so, and I can log in remotely and do it from my phone even if I need to. But we set them up on automatic tours and they'll, they'll give people a view of the river from north to south. Um, we can have some of our users will remote in and they can control them remotely. So we have two users on the East Coast that are on the site all day, every day and they have remote control privileges. And right. So they're moving the camera all the time. Yeah. And then the yeah. cameras are getting better, streams are getting better, everything just they looks are. nicer and nicer and nicer. Yeah. And this is the kind of year where people can really look into like those live stream cameras. I remember that uh, National Geographic tried to do what they call their uh, Olympic Games, where they try to have many different locations for cameras and stuff like that. Yeah. But with nature, a lot of times you can't you know, like have a person with a camera there at all times. Yeah. So these kind of live stream these things animals. Are kind of they don't run on schedule, right. right? So we might have a schedule like going live at two o'clock, and the animals. And the animals show like, up, no, you're not. <laughs> even the horses that are domesticated, and we have a little more control of. I mean, we kind of got to roll with it, yeah. you know. <laughs> and you have really nice horses too, because I remember that you got like a couple of years back. There was like a horse kind of following us around, just kind of like very curious and all oh, that yeah. stuff. And just like a nice area too, because it's not only just like what you'd imagine a ranch to be, just like open area. Prairie, yes, there's that, but then there's also kind of like a nice kind of trail, forest kind of thing to the river. Just a very beautiful place just to do these kind of live yeah. streams. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, it, you know, we do some mobile broadcasts, so we'll mount um, like a GoPro on, on top of a riding helmet or a cell phone or something, and we'll do, uh, we'll, we'll bring in Zoom sessions from remote guests. Uh, we also do some work with a rancher in eastern Montana and um, he's there on his computer, his phone, and out in the field and, and giving us some instruction for, and doing teletraining for horse training. So we, we try to bring in people from all different places and kind of walks of life to contribute on these live stream channels. Cool. And once again, where can people find these live streams and hopefully subscribe to be part of it? Yeah, it's days at dunroven.com. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's, is there anything else? Um, no, I mean, I, th I think it's really cool to connect with just the community at large. And, and it, it's something that with live streaming, I think we think of all the tech. And I mean, you and I are kind of geeks yeah. in that way. And we go, we go for the Because with ours, it's mostly just like table. you set up and then you tear down right. and then we go on. Right. But with you, you know, it's really cool because you can like do these kind of setups and then just kind of leave it there and then just do your maintenance over the uh, over time and yeah like that. and that that's all super cool and it's great to have it locked in place like that but the more important thing and having the website and even having it so that we're hosting the chat and everything on our own platform that's off of social media is that it gives that community a chance to really grow in a way that's a little more organic than even social media so it's more close-knit community and it gives folks a chance that if they're homebound right. or if they you know, just can't get out much or they don't have a big social circle, they can have their own social circle at Dunrovin. And we've had lots of people contact us and say, thank you for doing this because otherwise I might be a burden to my family or I, I just wouldn't have as many friends or whatever. So it's been really cool to work in the tech side of live streaming, but for the purpose of more of that humanity side of it and the, and the social uh, benefits of that. So that's, that's been kind of the biggest um, impact from my side of things. Well, thanks for joining us. Yeah, yeah. happy to be here.
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about events that are happening this week. It's time for your events. Here are all the library stuff that are constantly going on and happening all the time here in and around the library branches. Spectrum Discovery Center happens from Tuesday through Saturday from about uh, 10 a.m. to about 6 p.m. Um, and it is a great way for kids to get involved with exhibits and uh, science-related uh, engineering and so much more. STEM, that kind of thing, if you know what that means and you're a parent, uh, it's a great way to get involved with that kind of stuff as well. Missoula Public Library stuff is doing some Tiny tail story time yarns and watercolor on the fourth floor around noon. This is a lot of uh, things happening as well. Tiny tales and story time usually coincide and happens around 10.30 a.m. here at the Missoula Public Library at 455 East Main Street. Uh, pl uh, preschool play group is going to be at Roots Acro Sports Center. I'm bringing this back up again because this is a fun place for kids to do some uh, acrobats and uh, movement it is a great way for gymnastics for all ages and they also have a park or core group as well community connections family first learning lab uh, over up, 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 up on the second floor with all the uh, science fun and kids books uh, community connections is a program consistent of many interactive exhibits for children that pop up at partner organizations and events throughout the community these exhibits inspire hands-on exploration and play while focused on building empathy kindness and social emotional development cultural expression and imaginative and dramatic play um, community connections activities are free and open to the public. Uh, uh, then we have an Ode to Lunch. It's a virtual event. It is uh, the Missoula Writing Collaborative and U.S. P uh, Poet Laureate Naomi uh, Shehab, uh, uh, Shehab and I for uh, sorry if I butcher that name. I apologize uh, for our virtual Ode to Lunch luncheon. This free event will celebrate poetry, creative writing, and the works of the. Missoula Writing Collaborative. In addition, Naomi will will hear from the poet laureate Mark Gibbons and young student writers. Um, adult, and that happens around noon today. Uh, so, adult 16 plus ballet classes, Mismo Gymnastics are uh, doing a ballet classes for adults. Uh, 16 and older, and it, it kicks off today at 4 p.m. This will be a drop-in class every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. Please wear exercise clothes, yoga pants, you know, anything that you feel comfortable moving in. Uh, leotards and tights are optional. <coughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, you know, it's a drop-in, but it is, uh, the cost is about $15 for non-members and $12 four members and there's no experience necessary since it is an introductory course. Cheap date night, Missoula Public Library, Missoula Public Library's uh, monthly movie night is back. Come enjoy the recently released uh, feature during the cheap date night, the third Friday of each month in Missoula's library's copper room. It's Godzilla versus Kong. Uh, doors are open from 6.15 to 6.45 and the film starts at 6.30 p.m. And just so you guys know, don't park in the parking garage because they, they, they usually close that at night. So the best thing to do is to park out in the parking lot and all other doors will be locked and the movies... Uh, oh, actually, attendees must enter through the library's parking garage only. My bad. Opposite. <laughs> Swift that around. Forget about it. All right. So at Oregon Fil uh, Park and Allegiance Field, the it's the baseball field. You can't miss it. Um, the Stomping Ground, it is a premiere of The Stomping Ground, which is presented by Missoula Free Cycles. Doors open at 6 p.m., screen at 7. Uh, this action-packed feature explores the backyards and zones of our pro skiers, can frequently... Uh, frequent every day, sometimes a little extra effort and ingenu ingenuity, mm -hmm. from a born and raised re uh, resort in Idaho to the spectacular Lygen Alps just outside their hometowns in northern Norway. Our skiers thrive on what what's familiar and find thrills in the unexpected. In this process, they manage to rediscover what home is, and the home delivers in spades. Base camp, uh, middle school hangout, uh, happening tonight at 7 p.m. or bringing their brand of fun and activities for all ages to the former public library on 301 East Main. Please join us for the fun week programs. Adults, your base camp program is free. Join us for a week, weekly stretch and relax. Chair, yoga, or card, and board games for your first visit is free. Five $5 per session after the first visit. Just let us know if it's the first time and it's base camp and it's uh, put through the Missoula Parks and Recreation Department. All right, time for a quickie. Also, Saturday's show, uh, Zootown Arts is doing a uh, featured five short plays nightly from October 14th through the 16th. So we have it tonight and also tomorrow night. A local uh, Missoula playwrights uh, wrote this uh, a team up with the director uh, Nadine Atkins once more to shape an evening of original theater at the Zach's showroom. This cast includes local favorites Fiona Harris, Amaze uh, Gods and Derek, 
Carrie Collar, uh, Jasmine uh, Sherman, uh, Craig Mantier, and John Jim Thomas. The fifth short programs from Zula Writers is produced by Third Ear Productions, sponsored by Bell Pipe and Tobacco Company. Hmm. All right. Anyways, University of Montana is also doing a show this weekend as well. It's called Haunted. The UM Th School of Theater and Dance is proudly present an ar artistic and spooky twist on the traditional haunted house for its 2021-2022 season with Haunted. This walkthrough design exhibit show is a haunted house. And it's four distinct environments that have been inspired by scary stories from across the globe. Haunted runs in the Montana Theater in the Performing Arts and Radio Television Center. Admission to Haunted is $5 and can be purchased at the door. And it is unfortunate because the Missoula Haunted House is no longer happening. Not necessarily because of the pandemic, but just indefinitely. Uh, I just heard kind of offhand from uh, one of my friends saying that they're not going to be continuing doing the Missoula Haunted House, which they would, which they originally used to do at the Missoula Fairgrounds. And so this is going to be a nice uh, way for people to enjoy the Haunted House. It is $5. It's pretty great. And you can also, uh, 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 you can also uh, order online through Grizz Ticks. So find out more. It's called Haunted at the University of Montana. Tony Jackson in concert at Fort Missoula Regional Park at 8 p.m. You guys can check that out. Wailing Aaron Jennings is going to be at Union Club. We streamed him from Zach once. And those are your Saturday events. Up next, we got some, uh, some of your Saturday events. And uh, this one is uh, very important because this is something that people really need to uh, take, especially uh, Homeward. I always advocate for Homeward. They are a uh, government-sponsored uh, wayfinding place for people looking to buy more permanent housing, first-time home buyers, and it happens from October. Uh, it happens on October 16th from 9 to 6 p.m. And just so you know, these fill up almost immediately. So I just, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. It's not necessarily, this is something that you can do. This is something you do have to sign up online. You can call them. Uh, they believe in financial resilience, uh, comes from having financial judgment and decision-making skills to dodge pitfalls and make the right money moves for your future. Homeward is a great program that has plenty of resources for folks to maintain and retain housing and help folks find their forever first home. So this is happening, and this is also via Zoom, mm -hmm. and um, you can sign up online. It does cost uh, a fee, but you get much more out of it than the fee you put into it. All right, up next, we got Pumpkin Party at the Peas Farm. So if you're interested, you know, because it's, it's, it's the time to carve pumpkins and have all that fun, uh, Pumpkin and uh, the Peas Farm is doing a pumpkin patch deal, and it happens from 11 to 3 p.m. tomorrow on Saturday. Get your fall pumpkins and support growing goods, f uh, food for all. The Peas Farm welcomes you to the farm to select a pumpkin or three, hmm, they want you to buy more. It's about five to ten dollars per pumpkin. Buckets and uh, for the guts and horse for wash. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Oh yeah, all right. Buckets for the guts because you know the pumpkin guts. That's what I mean. <laughs> I I misread that uh, or misthought it when I read it. Anyways, and horses for washing the sticky off. And so feel f feel free to stay and carve your pumpkins if you like. They also have a small farm and variety for the fall harvest. They have some goods and vegetables and stuff that you can buy as well. Um, Ma'am is doing their teen open studio every Saturday at noon. They have a teen open studio. It's kind of like a drop-in for uh, teenagers just to do art and have the supplies there to help them along the way. And I think that you can bring some of your own stuff as well, and they help guide you in this art program. Fall Family Festival at Fort Missoula Regional Park. It is happening uh, on Saturday at 1 p.m. in the afternoon from 1 to 5. It's free. It's the 20th annual Fall Fest in a Missoula of Fort Missoula Regional Park. You guys can check that out. But if you're not checking that out, you can come to our Saturday drop-ins. Uh, MCAT does a Saturday drop-in from 1 to 3 p.m. It does stop animation, movie-making fun, all sorts of great activities for kids to get involved with, media. If they're interested in that kind of stuff, you drop by. If, if you think they might be interested in it, it's a great way for kids to create their own projects by themselves but eventually learn to work with others along the way. Uh, Tom Catmull is playing at DraftWorks Brewing Company uh, Saturday night at 5 p.m. Tom Catmull is the father of Jack Catmull, who is a great uh, great guy who just graduated from high school and is now in Texas. Uh, he used to work here at MCAT, and he was a delight. Um, but anyways, Tom Catmull will be playing some music, very Pearl Jammy kind of music, chill, cool Fun music at DraftWorks Brewing Company at 5 p.m. I can't say enough good things about Tom Catmull. Charlie Parr is going to be at the Wilma Theater. It's going to be some folk music, karaoke at Westside Lanes. And then you got Chris Moon happening every Saturday at 10 p.m. Some DJ, hip-hop uh, club, club music. And those are your Saturday events. Up next, we got you some of your Sunday events. Like always, Target Range. Uh, you know, you of course, you know, the farmer's markets happens. Like I probably I should mention the farmer's markets. It'll start uh, winding down. Probably this might be the last peak weekend. 
because everything will start just kind of wind down. There'll be a bunch of holdouts, but it'll be just kind of like, okay, you need to stop. Uh, <laughs> But the whole idea behind this is this like, uh, I mean, th I see it every year, uh, but this is pretty much like the fall festival, apple picking, all that stuff, just big things happening. Uh, this is kind of like the last weekend to really have that kind of like big hurrah uh, for any kind of vegetable buying, farmer's market kind of fun. And it happens from about 9 to about 1 p.m. Um, it does slate for like 8 to 2, but they, you know, like early morning, not for many of the markets, but they're pretty much peaking at 10 a.m., and until about 1 p.m. All right, so uh, this next uh, uh, item on Sunday is Target Range, the, mar the market, what happens from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and it's at the Target Range um, Elementary School, and that's just off of South Avenue, way down off South Avenue, past Fort Missoula Regional Park. You can't miss it. It is more uh, goods and services, but there's a bunch of farms and a bunch of installations all along the Target Range area. Check it out. There are a lot of farm stands. Missoula Jewish Kids Club. Shabbat Jewish Center for Missoula, Missoula Jewish Clips Club, is an exciting, immersive a learning experience uh, offering innovative program for kids aged 3 to 7 and 8 to 13. Um, the Montana Jewish Kids Club uh, presents Judaism through hands-on activities including art, crafts, baking, science, and uh, experiments, and more. Uh, th takes, uh, uh, it takes place twice monthly. Sar uh, Sundays from 10 to 11 a.m. with a bonus free play until 11.30 a.m. Fall registration is open every Sunday until December 12th. And that about does it for all of my events that are happening here as well. But I did want to say that uh, MCAT um, is going to be, let's see, is hosting a whole bunch of uh, workshops and events. You can call us at 542-6228 to set up appointments. If you wanted to learn a little bit about podcasting, you can call us. You can also find out more information on our Facebook page. You know, we posted uh, ads all over the place. You can also sign up through our website at MCAT.org. Uh, you can sign up through some Submittable. There's a lot of great resources in place to help you guys uh, kind of make your own movie projects and learn how to do it yourself along the way. We have it, we do a bunch of inter introductory courses, but once you're done with the introductory courses, you're all set alone and you always, actually not really alone because you always have us here at the uh, public library to be here to help you along your way with your movie making or short video making or just uh, some of your old movies that you've made back in the day and just kind of revitalize them. It's just a great resource for anybody who wants to create their own media for Missoula by Missoula and it is a uh, yeah it is a great resources and here are some of the workshops we got Photoshop workshop we got Adobe Premiere Pro we got Final Cut 10 Pro uh, we have intro to podcasting a lot of these are introductory courses and so if you're thinking that this is going to be an ongoing course don't expect that this is kind of like just to kind of get you guys started but we're uh, open here and we're here to serve people to let them uh, basically learn as they go, but help them along the way when they hit a wall. And that's kind of that's kind of our philosophy, kind of a laid back, uh, but showing you the way, uh, your own way. So, anyways, that's that's about it. So, I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. Take care.